Shout out to the exhausted <laughs> educator. <laughs> this is a Holding On To Learning LLC production. Woo! The ideas expressed on this show are not the views of their employer. Besides, if you really want to take advice from this guy, well, you should probably do it at your own risk. You're going to love the exhausted educator in the <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am super excited to have my good friend, Captain Enthusiasm himself, Rayshawn Ward with us here to get you jacked up and share a little bit of information that he's got about building an atmosphere in the classroom. Thanks for jumping on with me, Rayshawn. Hey, thank you for having me, Kyle, man. It's great to be back, man. It's like, like um, Kanye West says, great to be back home. <laughs> you know, you blink. And a year's gone by. I can't believe it's been over a year since you were on the last time, getting everybody jacked up. And, and by the way, listeners, the little snippet at the beginning of the intro, that's him. That's him. It's something he, he spilled the last time he was on. And we clipped it out and stuck it on there. And he was, he's, you know, now, he, now he's part of the intro forever, maybe. So I just really appreciate you jumping on. There is nobody better, in my opinion, to talk about building a positive atmosphere than this guy. But before we jump into all that, Ray Sean, do us a favor, especially for anybody who didn't listen to the previous episode over a year ago, just share your, your personal journey as far as education and how you got up to where you're at now. Okay. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank Kyle for having me on again, man. It's, this is a tremendous honor, man. I, I follow the podcast. Uh, first, it was uh, Exhausted Educators, now it's Recharged Family. So, you know, I'm part of that family. Uh, I'm thankful for Kyle, his family, and what he's doing for, you know, our community, uh, fellow teachers, scholars, and everyone in our community. So thank you, Kyle. Um, I love all of you. I love you. Appreciate you. <laughs> you know, I'm um, right back at you, man. So uh, to talk about my educational journey, first and foremost, happy start of a productive school year, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Should be a fun one. We're back to normal. Uh, it feels <laughs> great. Uh, but with my educational journey, um, I would let's go back to 2008. That's the year I graduated high school. Uh, everything started in Cesar Rodney School District. Um, I been in, with Cesar Rodney since kindergarten. But in 2008, that's when I graduated. And that summer of 08, I was very close and strongly considering going into the Air Force. Um, I remember scoring high on the ASVAB. I scored like it was like a composite score of 75. And I believe that's true. I think that's high. So, yeah. um, and they were just offering me a lot of jobs, but <laughs> I felt like the Air Force wasn't for me. Um, so that summer I was, you know, working summer camps, tutoring, um, giving back to the community by mentoring a lot of younger children, hanging out with my nieces and nephews and, you know, people will always, you know, say kids gravitate towards you. You have a positive personality. Um, you do so well with kids. And with those affirmations, I decided to um, go into education. I uh, started at Dell Tech. I was there for maybe uh, three semesters. And I love Dell Tech. I appreciate the uh, free education they provided. But I wanted to be at like a bigger university campus. So I transferred to Delaware State University. Uh, and um, I took up elementary education with a minor in mathematics. Um, at Dell State, I was, you know, uh, president of the student association, the education student association out there. I was the president of Delaware State Education Association for the entire state, the student program. Um, you know, I tutored the praxis. So I did. So I helped people become certified in teaching when I was going after my teaching degree. Um, I'm not pretty, surprised. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that, I'm just not surprised. You, right. you just got, you, you know, the leader in you just, it just comes out naturally, man. Yeah, thank you, man. And like, I was just a young pup, like <laughs> getting people, cert helping people become certified in teaching. And, you know, that, you know, added to my, um, my strive for greatness in education. And I graduated from Dell State um, 2014. Um, took a little break in between, but I, mean, I made it in 2014. Uh, and then uh, 
my first year of teaching started out in Cesar Ronnie School District. I taught at W.B. Simpson, which was cool because that's where I attended elementary school. So hmm. like being at W.B. Simpson uh, in 2014-15 and seeing all the renovation, I'm like, man, I remember this hallway. This is, you know, uh, the door went out of recess. It was, it was, it was a great time at W.B. Simpson. Um, and then after one year at W.B. Simpson, you know, I was on a temp contract, uh, so I had to reapply. And the crazy thing is we're in the middle of a uh, basketball camp because I coached at the high school also. And we was at team camp. I drove all the way down from Kutztown, PA. <laughs> and I had three interviews. Uh, I had an interview at Brown. I had an interview at Simpson. I had an interview at um, Allen Freer. But I got my days mixed up. So the day I was supposed to be at Brown, I showed up at Allen Freer with a <laughs> full suit and tie on, like, like palms sweating. Um, and I'm sitting in the front and um, the front office ladies were like, uh, there's no Rayshawn Ward on the interview um, list today. So I'm at Allen Freer on the road. I drove three hours from Kutztown. And, you know, Ju- uh, my principal, Julie, that lavender comes out and she says, uh, yeah, Mr. Ward, you don't have an interview with us today. It's on Tuesday. But and she was joking. She jokingly said it. She was like, uh, tell them other schools not to worry about it. Like she said it in a joking way. And, you know, I killed my interview on Tuesday. Um, they all, the panel loved me. I got hired. I don't fear. I've been here ever since, man. And, you yeah. know, I, I don't want to leave because, yep. you know, I love the leadership. I love my colleagues. I love the scholars. I love the uh, the neighborhoods they come from because I'm very familiar with the area, um, and this is my this is my eighth year at Allen Freer, um, and you know I forgot to say I'm the teacher of the year for the 2023. Yes, you are, sir. Yes, you are. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, man. 2023 school year. So, like you said, a lot has changed in the last year since we did our first interview, yeah, or a podcast because like. You talked about positive energy and, you know, giving back and, you know, things being reciprocated. And now I'm the teacher of the year and I still can't believe it because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm silly, crazy, yep, and, um, jovial. So there's um, never been a better time to be silly and crazy with kids, though, man. After everything they've gone through in the last so many years, there has never been a better time. And to be honest with you, that slides right into what we're going to talk about, you know, that, and that the reason why you are the perfect person to talk about building an atmosphere in a classroom. It just comes naturally for you. So really when we talk about (laughs) building an atmosphere, a lot of it starts with connections and you have like a super secret sauce of connecting (laughs) with individuals. I've seen it. Students love you. Staff love you. Staff loves you. It's just, you know, it's in you and it comes out naturally. What can you talk to about, you know, share with anybody about, What's your secret sauce for connecting with with students in general? Uh, secret sauce, man. Like, <laughs> like barbecue, you know. If it's a secret, do I have to share it? But no. <laughs> I love to share it, but I always believe um, you have to make a connection before you teach any content. So without any relatedness, little to no work will get done. So yeah. finding ways to connect to the kids with kids, even my colleagues, it's not just the kids, but everyone around the school, um, a lot, a lot more work will get done. Um, I would say the secret sauce is just in find, finding engaging ways to, you know, um, get the kids to learn, making things relevant um, from, you know, adding music to your lessons or talking about, you know, Roblox or Minecraft or sports. Um, because when you do that, kids are engaged and they're ready for the next lesson or they they're just biting at the bit and waiting for you to say something else and i do that i strive to do that every day in um, my class um and you know i think building creating an environment for the kids that um that welcomes their ideas and thoughts um helps you know strengthens that connection and, you know, you just just learning of getting to know the kids, because I know uh, as teachers and educators and people in education, our days are busy. And sometimes people think like, oh, I don't got enough time to do that. But hmm. you have to find time 
to, you know, get to know the kids or just break away from the curriculum and, you know, sit back and talk about what's going on today or how the kids are feeling, especially in this uh, fun social um, emotional world of learning. So, and the kids are like, I'm not gonna say on high alert, but they're either very happy or they're hmm. very sad. So, you know, yeah. acknowledging their feelings and, um, you know, meeting them at the door every day to see how they're coming in because, you know, you have kids that come in with a smile and that one day they don't come in with a smile. Like, all right, what's wrong, uh, Rayshawn? Um, did you get breakfast this morning or, you know, what happened on the bus or what happened this weekend? But like, you know, coming out to their level, getting to know them helps strengthen the, the connection too. So like I said, connect before content. So, you know, make yeah. those connections before you try to talk about volume or, you know, that power goal book that you uh, have in your desk. So, you know. You're so right though. You're so right. And so many, so many kids will respond much more favorably if they make a, if they just have a positive connection with, with the staff yeah. in the room. Right. And you do this naturally, right? Like it's, it, I've seen, I've seen you in action. You, you do this naturally. You just get to know the students in your classroom and you like, you just ooze enthusiasm and excitement <laughs> and, and students are just naturally drawn to you. And that builds a positive atmosphere right off the jump. So again, back to our overall topic of building a positive atmosphere. I truly believe with so many, so many students are, are struggling academically and also behaviorally in the classroom. And I truly believe that there are less behavior challenges in classrooms when the atmosphere is much more positive. And you, you drive that, that point home to me, you know, personally, you know, without saying it, just, just from experiencing, you know, your positive energy. So can you dive into like the, the way you promote the positive atmosphere in your classroom? Yes. Uh, I love this question, man. I, just, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I strongly believe um, as a coach, as a teacher, as a person and a pillar in the community, I think, um, well, not I think, I believe that people respond to their environment and their condition. So what I mean by that, they can respond in a negative way or a positive way. And in my classroom, I want and I need my kids to respond in a positive way. And by doing that, you know, first you gotta establish a routine, especially at the beginning of the school year, because some kids, you know, they come from the summertime and they don't have a routine at all. Like they just get up, do whatever, you know, on the tablet, whatever. And even during the school year, when they go home, it may not be a, a routine. And with the routine, um, I provide consistency on a daily basis. With, with our guideline, our rules and guidelines, our, um, our lessons, um, how how things are ran in the classroom. So routine, consistency, and overall with all of that, just having um, positive expectations and having a positive mindset because with that positive mindset, anything can get accomplished. So um, if the kids see me being positive and, you know, and they, and they feel those positive vibrations around the room, like they're willing to do whatever and they, they, they will exemplify that positive energy. Um, what else? Uh, my mission every day is for the kids to want to come to school. Like, yeah. you know, you know, when pe people wake up and don't want to go to work. So, and yeah. you know, this is work for the kids. So when the kids wake up, like, can I go to school today? I want to show Mr. Ward this, or I want to talk, share with Mr. Ward this, or, you know, now it's football season. So if my Ravens lose, these <laughs> kids are like running down the hall, like Mr. Warrior Ravens lost. Like, come on, man. <laughs> But when my Ravens win, I have a thing in my room where if you my Ravens win, you wear purple, you get candy or you get a fair fund. So when my Ravens win, I have about 10 kids up in my room in the morning are coming down like, Mr. Ward, my socks are purple or, <laughs> or this bead in my head is purple or, you know, I'm like, come on, man. Like, that's not purple. That's like magenta. But still, like, you know, they, they want to come to find ways to encourage the kids to come to school. And um you know not just coming to school but I want my kids to go home and talk about what they're learning about in class so you know ex extending that at home and I have parents and family that say 
would text me or they seem like so-and-so wouldn't be quiet about you at the dinner table. I'm like, well, what are they talking about? Or volume or this little joke you did, but you know, you just finding ways that like it goes back to connecting with the kids or making things relevant. Um, that's why I love this question because it ties so much into the previous question you asked. Um, um, and also building the positive classroom environment, I would say meeting the kids at the door every morning. Like I know as teachers, we have to make sure, you know, we facilitate the lessons that we plan each day and week, but like getting up out of your seat or get, getting out into the hallway, greeting the kids with the handshake or, you know, a lot of kids like giving me hugs and high fives, like being visible because when they see you and they see that positive energy, like kids in second grade, I've never met like Mr. War, I want you in fifth grade. I'm like, I'm, I'm glad you're looking forward to fifth grade. Like, let's go. Like, they're like getting said, on the waiting list. Lines. Like, Mr. War, like first graders, like, Mr. War, I want to be in your class in fifth grade. And that's not to brag, but like me being in the hallways and, you know, being positive and jovial and relating to the kids, connecting the kids, like, they want to be at school, they want to be in your class. And, you know, you know, like I said, you're acknowledging their feelings. So, um, yep. And that's true. I mean, that, that that's you to a T, right? Like, and that's, that's really the number one reason why I want to have you on is you, you exude this positive energy and people want to be around you. And so when you have a student who's maybe going through some, some stuff, you know, that's beyond our control as educators, the best we can do is offer the best of ourselves to them that's and right. build them up. And I know that's exactly what you're all about. And you're also all about enthusiasm. And so for any of our, if, or any of our listeners, if you didn't hear Ray Sean way back in the first time he was on, go back over a year ago and listen to his previous episode. It's all about being enthusiastic in the classroom. So I just want to take a minute before we, before we jet out of here for you to share with the audience, you know, you rehash whatever you want or bring in anything new. You know, what's, what is the secret for people to know about keeping a high level of enthusiasm because you go from the moment you you start to the end of the year i know everybody has dips and so forth we're human but in general you keep it high constantly so what can you share with the audience about keeping enthusiasm high um like i said before i don't drink coffee i mean i drink coffee but i don't rely on coffee for energy it's just like it's a mindset. It's a mindset to me. Like you have to wake up and I know everyone, they have their own backpack, you know, but, and they deal with things at home or outside of school, but having a mindset, like when you go to work, you're going to have a great day. And then you're here for these kids and, you know, being optimistic, being enthusiastic, but how I maintain my level of enthusiasm all year, I would say self-care, finding ways uh, outside of work to, you know, do what you love when you can. Um, I love sports. I love watching sports. I love hanging with my family and friends. Um, and, you know, I love buying shoes. So, you know, doing those things outside of work and not taking all your work home with you every single night. Cause I know some nights we have to take work home, you know, but uh, as superheroes, we do that. You know, Superman has his cape underneath, you know, his shirt and tie. Uh, Batman has his, you know, cape and mask in his briefcase, but, you know, find ways to handle your self care. Like if you get pedicures and manicures, do that. If you need to get your hair done, do that. If you like to go fishing, do that. Camping, do that. But, um, you know, going to Target, you know, Target is back in Dover. So, you know, go down the aisle and buy, buy yourself something, you know, retail therapy. But, you know, just taking care of yourself and coming into each and every day with a positive mindset, no matter what's happening. Because there are mornings where, like, you know, I'm like, oh, is, it, uh, is it Thanksgiving break yet? You know, but soon as I get in the car, you know, I put put my Eric Thomas on or I put some R&B. I have a thing, no rap before 11. So I listen to R&B or smooth jazz on the way to work and just, you know, think positive thoughts. And, and then because that one kid or those group of kids need you to lead them in a positive direction. And, you know, 
they want to see you. And if you're not 90% yourself or giving them at least 90%, because, you know, I, I try to get 200%. But <laughs> if you're not giving at least 90% of yourself, I mean, why are you at work? Yeah. But, you know, teachers, 180 days, take care of yourself. Take a break. Exhale, you know. But and all, always have that positive mental attitude about not just work, but everything in your life, no matter what you're going through. Love it. Love it. All good words of wisdom from Captain Enthusiasm himself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right, Ray Sean, uh, before we get out of here, uh, if anybody wants to connect with you, how can they connect? All right. So you can add me on Facebook, uh, Ray Sean Ward. My name is R A Y S H A U N. Last name is W A R D. Um, on Instagram, my Instagram handle is Freshly Snipes. I'm not Wesley Snipes. I'm not good looking like him, but Freshly Snipes one. And on Twitter, it's the same thing. Freshly Snipes one. And, you know, my email is, you know, Rayshon.ward at cr.capo.de.us. And, you know, you can request me, you know, I'm a social person and I love people. Yep. And we'll put we'll put his contacts down in the in the show notes too if you if you need to check it out. So Ray Sean Ward, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, my friend. You never disappoint. I'm sure <laughs> next we'll we'll book you again next year. We're gonna keep you coming back annually to keep us keep us juiced right. about, you know, keep us juiced about education and, and the positive work that we're doing in education. And I, I honestly believe this, man. The the world, your school, your class students, people in general are a better place because you're out there helping, helping them. So thank you for all you do. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the love and recognition. And, you know, um, I love your podcast. Like I said, it started with exhausted educators. Now it's the recharge family and then what you're doing for our community. And, you know, the world is great. And, um, let's go, man. We should take this thing on the road. <laughs> Where we first stop. Hollywood! <laughs> Thanks so much, Sean. I appreciate you. <laughs> Party time. It's like, boom, boom, boom. Sirens are going off in my head. We're going to try to just not be horrible. Watching you, exhausting entertainers. Always watching. Last kiss is missed.